Hi everyone, this is Abhinav from Phonebench and today we are reviewing the Coolpad Dazen 1. The price is just Rs. 699, it comes with very decent specs. You have a 5 inch HD IPS display in the front, no protection on top, Snapdragon 410 quad core processor, 4G LTE support, 2 gigs of RAM, 8 gigs of internal storage, 8 megapixel rear camera and a 5 megapixel front facing camera along with a 2500 mAh removable battery. But that's just the specs. Let's find out more about the device. Coming to the build, on the right you have the power lock and unlock button, offers good feedback. At the top you have the 3.5mm audio jack. On the left you have the volume rocker. Again, tactile response is pretty good. At the bottom, micro USB data syncing charging port. Now at the back you have 8MP camera, LED flash and secondary noise cancellation mic along with the speakerphone at the bottom. Now the back of the phone is flat, therefore the speakerphone does get muffled very easily. The back has a soft touch finish, quite like the Redmi 2. It feels good to hold in the hand, doesn't bend or flex. So you have two micro SIM card slots and a micro SD card slot for additional 32 gigs of storage, a 2500mAh removable battery. Now the SIM slot 2 is mislabeled as SIM slot 1 and vice versa. Although the labeling doesn't really matter, but it shows a lack of care for the device. But the build is pretty good over here, the phone does feel good to hold in the hand. Now in the front you have a 5 megapixel camera, you can see the notification LED glowing green, proximity and light sensors along with the earpiece up top. Capacitive buttons just below the display, they do light up. The leftmost key behaves as the menu key, long tapping it, you can open the task manager or app switcher. Now the 5 inch HD IPS display does look pretty good. It is sharp enough, but the backlight is quite uneven. Especially on the sides, you can see a bit of light bleeding through. Auto mode is just too aggressive, it reduces brightness quite a lot, especially if you are inside. Now for the price, the display is actually pretty decent, colors do look alright on it, they are vibrant, viewing angles are quite wide, but yes, the contrast levels could have been slightly higher, black text looks a bit grayish here. Now we didn't have any major issues with network or call quality, I had a few dropped calls but that was just about it. Overall network retention was pretty good, call recording is available over here, you do have auto call recording facility too. Wi-Fi tethering and GPS is available on the device, it does work quite fine. Now the camera is the weakest part of this device. Both the front and rear cameras don't actually take that good pictures. There is a pro mode, but again, there is no manual control over focus which is required because this camera doesn't want to focus in. The front facing camera isn't that great either. In beauty mode, images generally turn out hazy. Even in normal mode, you can see quite a lot of blurry images even with a little camera shake. Now let's come to more camera samples. This camera hunts for focus quite a lot. It's almost impossible to get focusing right on this. It behaves as a fixed focus camera most of the time. You cannot get focus correctly on macro shots. You have to work quite a lot. Moreover, HDR toning is not that great either. A lot of noise in images and there's sort of a watercolor effect. Exposure compensation is not good, even though distant shots actually do turn out decent. Lot of noise in macro shots, you can see this is not a good camera at all. Neither touch to focus nor autofocus work correctly for this camera. Now have a look at this image. If you can see the tree in the background, those leaves aren't meant to be purplish in color. They are green, so color reproduction is also not good. Now in conclusion, the camera performance is really poor on this device. Low light shots are truly abysmal. You can see that even the flash cannot help in focusing. Now even in videos, colors do appear undersaturated. You do have tap to focus, no continuous autofocus here. Audio quality is just about decent. And there's quite a lot of artifacting and noise in videos too. Now for some good things about the device. The music playback quality from both the speakerphone and the headset jack is actually pretty good. The sound from the speakerphone actually does get muffled. FM radio is supported over here. It's able to locate channels quickly. The speakerphone isn't tinny, no FM recording available over here. Now 1080p videos do play alright over here, colors do look alright on this display as I've already said. You can pop out the video player as well, no major issues with performance on this device, even while playing video and working on something else. Now we played a video over YouTube at 720p and there were no issues with streaming video too, everything actually worked out quite well. Now let's come to software. So this one is running cool UI 6 on top of Android 4.4 KitKat still and we don't know whether this would be upgraded to Lollipop and you have all your apps available right on your home screens quite like MIUI. 
you have similar gestures available too. Now there's one nice thing here, it's rock wallpaper. You can quickly change wallpapers by just tapping on this icon. Just swiping from the top, you can open up your notification shade. Now let's get into the settings and you can see we are running Android 4.4.4 KitKat on the device. You have about four gigs of storage available, but app and app data both are movable to the external storage. However, USB OTG is not supported. And you can see there's plenty of RAM free right now. You can customize the notification shade, just move around the icons, you cannot add any more. You can also change the vibration level while ringtones, notifications or while touching the display and that's a good feature there. You have some gestures available too. The most useful I found was double tap to wake, the rest are a bit more gimmicky. You can draw several letters to open up different apps and that's just about it. Now there's a dual window feature available over here which for a 5 inch display isn't that useful. Now, I didn't find a bug here. If you are playing a video in the lower portion of the dual window, the second part that is, the video player just disappears if it's not in focus. But apart from that, it generally works out quite well. No issues with performance. Even web browsing is actually pretty smooth on the device. You can see scrolling is a breeze. Pinch to zoom is also very smooth over here. Touch response is generally very good on the display. Apps do open up quickly. You can just see that as well. Overall, no major issues with performance on this device. It doesn't heat up while playing games or even in general use. So I've opened up a few apps and I'll go back to Chrome and you can see that it reloaded the page. So garbage collection is pretty aggressive on the device even when you have more than one gig of RAM free. So that's a bit strange, but it generally doesn't hamper any multitasking. Now, as I've already told you, app and app data both are movable to the external storage. So gaming was actually pretty fun on this device. It performed quite well. There was no lag in even the higher end games and this phone didn't heat up at all which is quite a big feat in this price segment. Now battery life was another good thing about the device. I was able to get about three, three and a half hours of screen on time even with some video and music playback. Well folks, it's now time for a conclusion. The Coolpad Dazen 1 has been priced correctly at Rs. 7000. The build quality is quite good on this device. It's just the poor cameras that really let down this device. The display has some issues over here too, the backlight is uneven, the contrast level should have been a bit better too. Now I'll circle back to the cameras because they have become an important part of our lives, especially on smartphones and here they don't perform well at all. The Euphoria, Lenovo A6000 Plus and the Redmi 2 all have better cameras and therefore I really don't find myself recommending this device until we get some fix for that camera. We will be back with more. If you have any questions about this or any other smartphones, do it us in the comment section. Thanks for watching this video and as always have a great day.